I did not know there were so many different types of dowels in the market. You got the ribbed, the helical, the plain Jane, and the weird Miller dowel for all of your woodworking pleasures. Are there specific advantages to these designs and how well do they compare to the mighty Domino? And while we're at it, how much stronger is a quarter inch dowel compared to a half inch dowel? Or a one inch deep dowel against a four inch deep dowel? I'm going to... <laughs> test all of these scenarios and show you some surprising results that definitely left me scratching my head. All right, as you might imagine, we're going to be cutting a lot of dowels in this video and after one of them jumping on me at the table saw, I've decided to be like every other woodworker on YouTube and finally use some walnut. I'm using a V-bit on a router table and driving a couple of nails to make this scrappy jig complete with a clamp for a fence. This way, I can register the dowels on the jig and safely cut them at a desired length with a Japanese pole saw. The first question I wanted to test is, does the diameter of a dowel impact its strength? And if so, by how much? Generally speaking, the size of the dowel should correspond with the thickness of the material you're working with. Common wisdom says to break things into thirds, as in one third of the thickness of the wood is reserved on either side with one third in the middle being for the joinery. For the purpose of this video, however, in this test, we're using one inch thick stock cherry with plain birch dowels that are one eighth inch, one quarter inch, three eighths inch, and half inch in diameter, and all of them are two inches long. Starting with the eighth inch dowel, as silly as it may seem, I personally just really have to know how strong these guys are, and I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. I'm applying glue on just one half of the dowel, driving it halfway down, and then putting a wax paper in between, and then driving the other half with glue. The reason why I'm using wax paper in these tests is because I want to isolate the strength we get from just the dowels themselves and not any other glue surfaces between the mating woods because that introduces a lot of problem for us to be able to directly compare the actual holding strength of the dowels. But don't worry, we will be doing a much more realistic test later in the video. The eighth inch dowels, with five sample pieces took an average of 62.2 pounds of force to pull them apart. And the results between the samples were actually fairly consistent. Let me ask you this. Is this more or less than you expected? Honestly, for me, I'm not really sure what I expected, but at least now we know for sure. Oh, and if you're wondering, did I have a machine shop manufacture this steel plate specifically for these tests so that you can get a nice, clean, unabstracted view of these joints breaking while also breaking my bank? Yes, yes I did. So I hope you like the footage. Moving up to the quarter inch dowel that has two times the diameter, we're certainly going from something that could be used as a toothpick to something that is actually suitable for joinery. These joints took 303 pounds of pulling strength to separate. Now, that is a huge difference, and I'll explain why it is also strange in just a moment, but testing the rest, the 3 8 and the half inch dowel, we get 709.6 pounds and 1021.8 pounds, respectively. I should clarify that all of these dowels had a similar fit and a small channel was planed onto them to make sure that the glue and the air had a route of scrape when driving them down. When looking at this data, you might say, hey, that looks like my cellular network logo. But smarter people will say, big whoop genius, of course the wider diameter dowel would take more forces to break them apart because there's more glue surface area. And I would say you're right. So. When we normalize the data and calculate the pulling forces needed to separate one square inch of glue surface on each of the different size dowels, this is what we get. And to me, that is far more interesting data because it shows that the 3 8 inch and half inch dowels have a clear dominance over the smaller ones despite having the same glue surface contact. And why is that? Geometry, perhaps? Maybe I suck at making these tests? Magic? I don't know, but the data is reasonably consistent and it is unlikely to be a fluke. 
Maybe someone who is a proper physicist or an engineer can explain down in the comments below. This tells me, if you're deciding between the diameter of dowels to use and you have the option, try and use the 3 8 and half inch dowels because they're going to give you substantially more holding power. On the next test, I wanted to know how much more strength do we get with longer and deeper dowels. We're using 3 8 inch plain birch dowels because they're easy to find and easy to cut at our desired length, and in this case we're using 1 inch, 2 inch, and 4 inch. Starting with the 1 inch dowel that consists of half inch embedding on each of the two mating pieces, we get an average of 388.8 pounds of force using five test samples. So if you're doing dowel joinery on thinner stock and you can only do half inch deep on each side, don't worry, these joints are plenty strong. Up next, we're going to be testing two inch depth that effectively has two times the glue surface area of the one inch dowels and we get 924.2 pounds of tensile strength. That is remarkable because the two times increase in glue surface area generated almost two and a half times more strength when compared with the one inch dowel. Now look, two inch is a perfectly adequate size and I cannot imagine a scenario where you would want a bigger dowel than this. But some women are into it, so using four inch dowels it took an average of 1,611.6 pounds of tensile strength to break these joints. This is absolutely tremendous, especially because this is coming from one dowel, you guys. This should give you a lot of confidence in using four inch dowels in critical joinery, such as large doors and gates. As we jump from one inch to two inch and four inch, effectively doubling the glue surface area each step of the way, we get a 2.38 times and a 1.74 times increase in tensile strength. While this is not exactly linear and there's probably a point of diminishing return at a given length, you definitely get a lot more strength the deeper you go. But tensile strength is not the only kind of force a joint experiences. Similarly, we never use just a single dowel, right? And we dab some wood glue on the mating surfaces while at it. Those are much more realistic scenarios and I wanted to test them to compare the differences in performance between popular types of dowels in the market and see if they can outperform a plain old dowel stick. And of course, this would not be a woodworking channel if I did not put these dowels head to head against the mighty Festool Domino. Because in my opinion, if you're going to be buying a specialty tool that is this expensive, it has to do a better job than the cheaper method. In this set of tests, all of the dowels are two and a quarter inch long with an exception to the Miller dowel and the Festool Domino. I made 10 samples for each dowel types, five for tensile strength and five for shear strength. I'm going to talk about the tensile strength first and then show you all of the results for the shear strengths at the end. Starting with the plain dowel, the advantage is that it is easy to find at any home centers at various diameters and species. You can cut them at whatever length you need for your projects and if you want them to be through dowels, they leave a nice clean look that you can accentuate with contrasting species of wood. But the problem with these dowels is that they're not grab and go ready. As in, you have to cut them and chamfer the ends to make them easier to insert into the holes. And you really do need to cut some kind of a channel in them to allow air and glue to escape because otherwise the dowels might not seat properly. Using two plain dowels with glue spread between the mating surfaces and after 24 hours of drying, it took 1,645.9 pounds of tensile strength to break, which is a lot more strength coming from these tiny joints like this, but it gets even better. Up next is the helical dowel. They come pre-cut to specific lengths, and I think the idea behind the helical shape is to create a channel for the air and the glue to escape while maintaining as much glue surface area as possible to make close contact with the woods in the hole similar to the plain dowels we just tested. And while you can get clever with the placement of these dowels to make them look as attractive as a through dowel with the plain dowels we've seen, it is best that they're used as hidden joinery, which requires a doweling jig or proper repetitive setup. 
These joints took an average of 1,940.14 pounds of tensile strength to break. And while the range of strengths between the samples were a little all over the place, at face value, they do appear to be stronger than the plain dowel. The fluted dowel, on the other hand, has a lot of little ridges that allows glue and air to escape, but very little wood is on the outside diameter of the dowel that is making contact with the hole. I find that these dowels are very easy to insert due to the lower friction, but I do wonder if they will be strong enough from the lack of wood to wood contact, or maybe they might even be stronger due to all of the glue that the dowels can hold up. These samples took a total of 1,952.92 pounds of force to break, which is very similar to the Helicor dowels, but broke a lot more consistently. The Miller dowel is, um, well, it's a weird looking dowel. There are several steps on it and it can only be used with a specialty bit that is used to cut the corresponding holes. You pretty much have to have both of the mating surfaces already held together before you drive the bit, which can be a little awkward and is the reason why I made this jig to ensure being able to repeatedly cut these holes. Personally, I kind of don't understand this dowel, you guys, because the more I think about it, the more it seems to me it's made different for the sake of being different. And all the while tying you to a specialty bit and a specialty dowel. I'm not impressed with the quality of the bit compared to the quality of the wood owl bits that I've been using to make hundreds of holes throughout this test without breaking a single sweat. I highly recommend you try these bits out for yourself and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And because these Miller dowels is a step design, the actual section that is going through the first piece and into the second piece is pretty thin and I'm concerned about its holding power. There is one notable advantage to this dowel and it is this head. It is meant to sit proud so that you can flush trim, leaving a nice attractive joint similar to the plain dowel. Let's break them. Funny enough, the shaft of the dowel snapped off the head in some cases and it's it's, it's just kind of hilarious to see. And it took an average of 1,574 pounds of strength to break them apart. So it is the weakest joint we have tested so far, which really shouldn't surprise anyone. The Domino is another specialty tool that is way more expensive in every way. And in the case of this test, I'm not sure it's really a fair comparison because the shape of the Domino is very different from the shape of the dowels. Nevertheless, using the same size stock, I was able to fit two eight millimeter thick dominoes in there. And these are 50 millimeters deep. These joints took 2,291 pounds of force to break. And again, this is not a fair comparison because there is a bit more glue surface area here, but clearly they are very strong and honestly super easy and fast to make. Now, when we change the orientation of these joints and switch them from tensile strength to shear strength, you can see that all of the joints that were in the 1600 to 1900s are now all below 1400 pounds of force. Interestingly, the helical and the fluted dowels does a spec spectacular job of being the strongest of the bunch. And I never had much hopes for the Miller dowels because they're very thin at this section of the shear load. Surprisingly though, I did not expect the Festool Domino to be the weakest link, but it kind of does make sense because there are wide slots with very little short grain wood on the other side that are very easy to snap. I suspect that the Domino would perform better in other scenarios like in the middle of a board, though I imagine all of the dowels would perform better in that scenario as well. So which dowels are the best? The plain dowels are definitely not the strongest in any of these tests, but they can be useful when you need custom sizes and custom diameters. I would say the helical is probably overall the strongest dowel design of the bunch if you were to consider both the tensile strength and the shear strength. But I would recommend that you go with the fluted dowels because they're almost as strong as the helical dowels while being easier to drive into the holes due to less friction from the fluted design. 
I personally still don't understand the Mitre Dolls, if I'm being honest, and their strength leaves so much to be desired among the competition, but I know plenty of folks who uses these dolls and love them. Coming into this test, I was expecting there to be a major performance difference between the different doll designs. And while we tested a bunch of boomerangs in this video, in reality, you're probably using these dolls for joinery that is supported in two or more places, and pretty much all of these dolls are strong enough for just about anything you can throw at it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.